let's start over now with a different scenario. Let's say this isn't a good day, Kansas City approach radar is down and we're going to have to go fly the full procedure. With the GNS 430, this won't be a problem. We do the same thing we did before. We're going to fly an approach, and approach is a procedure, so press procedure key, select approach, enter. We want to do the same approach, localizer 36, but this case, we're not going to have controllers to vector us onto it. We've got to go out to the initial approach fix. Notice it's even labeled in magenta, IA. I press enter. It gives us the same question. Do we want to load it or activate it? Let's say they haven't cleared us for the approach yet, so we're just going to preload it. Same disclaimer. Everything happened just the same way. Look over here, 1083 is in our standby. I'd go ahead and put it up to active. We're still flying direct to the airport, but we have the approach down here in a buffer zone waiting to be activated. So I press flight plan, gets me back onto the map. Now we're flying along, just tooling along here at 115 knots, and wait for those magic words. Mooney 430 Golf, you're cleared for the localizer 36, your own transition. Boy, this is going to be fun. I just go procedure, and it says activate approach, enter. Again, at that point, I'm done having to play with the GNS 430. Everything else is going to happen automatically. Personally, I like to declutter the map so I can see everything that's going on. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a scale. You're going to see we're going to fly out here to the initial approach fix. And you'll see it coming out. I'll go ahead and zoom out. Initial fix. It's going to automatically give us our outbound. We're going to go outbound. It's going to tell us when to do our procedure turn. When we turn inbound, it's automatically going to lay in our inbound course. And when we turn inbound, it's also, in the real unit, not the simulator, it would switch it over to localizer, take us to the final fix, and down to the missed approach point. Again, that's the beauty of this box. Once you activate it, you're done. You're not flipping knobs, putting a lot of buttons. So let's just fly along and watch as it goes. Now we're approaching up on Herb. You can see here we're about four miles out. The next thing we're going to see is a thing called turn anticipation. And this is slick. Look down here at the nav area. You're going to start seeing next desired track flash up there. Then it's going to tell you turn to whatever that next course is. If you start a nice standard rate turn at that point, it'll give you a smooth intercept to your outbound course. So we just fly along and do what the box tells you. Where you're going to have the most problems with this box is if you try to make things more complicated than they are. Let everything happen itself. Let it sequence. Something else you'll notice that I changed on this round was the auto course zoom. Notice as it gets closer in, it's zooming in. And again, I'll show that later on in the video, how to do that yourself. But we're coming in. We're two and a half miles out, doing 127 knots. And in a few minutes, we're about a mile and a half, it's going to tell us when to, what our outbound course is and tell us when to turn to our outbound course. There's our next desired track, 176 degrees. And it's approximately 15 seconds before you need to start the turn. It starts flashing that. Now turn to 176 degrees. So that's my outbound. And if you're coupled to an autopilot, you can turn your HSI to the outbound, and it will fly this leg change. I'm going to zoom out here on my scale so we see what's going on. There, it just sequenced to my outbound leg. Now we're going to go outbound one minute to do the procedure turn. If I zoom out a little farther, I can even show you the protected airspace. It even maps that out for you so you know where you're safe. Also, normally you go outbound one minute. If I go over here to my main nav page, I can look here. My estimated time en route, since I'm not na navigating to a point anymore, it started the timer outbound. So we've been outbound 35 seconds, but I don't need to do that because the unit's going to tell me when I've been out a minute and I need to start my outbound on the procedure turn. At this point on the procedure turn, it says start procedure turn, you would go to heading mode on your autopilot or you'll hand fly uh, 
the pictorial. Just like on the holding patterns, the procedure turn is scaled based on your ground speed to be one minute. So at this point it was outbound and you noticed our desired track or our course outbound was 176 degrees and CDI needles coming off. And here's our distance from our final approach fix also. 2.7 miles from, from Waypoint Herb. Now when I've gone outbound about a minute, we go ahead and speed this up a little bit. I go ahead and make my turn inbound. You're going to notice halfway around my turn inbound, it's going to sequence to the inbound course on that approach. Next desired track 356 and I can couple my nav to it. Again, look at that picture. It's kind of like the olden days when I was learning to fly. They sat there and said, if you peeked out the window while you're doing instruments, one peek is worth a thousand scans. Now this is worth at least 500, uh, 500 scans. We're coming inbound. At this point, it's just like our vectors to final. We're getting established. We're 3.3 miles out from our final approach fix. And if this had been a real unit, it would have switched to localizer if you had the proper frequency tuned in up here. So if you forgot to switch the GPS switch, it would do it automatically. Now we just fly this down just like we did before. Now we're coming up on the missed approach point. I'm about, oh, just coming up on a half mile out. And we might try a different scenario this time on the missed approach. Let's say, hey, we've tried a couple times going into executive. We just don't see the runway. So we're going to try an ILS at a different airport. So we're going to do one of the more complicated things, but it's not with this box. So we come up to the missed approach point. Boom. At that point, it would sequence us out to the missed approach hold. I'm going to put it in GPS mode now. But that's not what we're going to do. We talk to the controller, say, hey, we're going to go ahead and try an ILS approach at uh, Kansas City Downtown Airport now since we can't get into executive. So again, we just go direct to. And again, in this case, you press direct to twice because it wants to take you out to the missed approach hold point. With the little knob, scroll in your identifier again, your letters and your cursor position. And you can put in, we're going to go to MKC. K, C, enter, enter. Now we're flying to that airport, but they're giving us a vector at this point. They're saying fly heading 360 vectors for the ILS runway 3, Kansas City downtown. So again, all you do is go procedure, select approach, enter, ILS 3, vectors to final. And in this case, they're vectoring me already. I'm going to activate it. Little disclaimer, it tuned in the localizer for me. And we're set. I press flight plan. That's it. It looked like a bunch of button pushers. I bet I can do that 10 times faster than you can switch in your approach plate and dial in all your frequencies manually and know where you are with that approach. So we're 10 and a half miles out from Norge. Uh, come over here, our desired track. Our inbound is 030. And uh, we're about two and a half miles from intercepting the localizer because my CDI is deflected two and a half miles. So things start happening pretty quick. Once you get it mapped out and you see where you're at, it's a piece of cake.